Let's talk about supports. In today's videos, we are testing a theory that PETG is a good support material for PLA because they don't bond well with each other. This makes them an excellent combo for multi-material printers like iDex machines or even printers like Bamboo Lab, Anycubic or now even Creality, which have their respective multi-material systems. Our journey begins on printables, where we look for some torture tests for supports. There were a few interesting ones, but the one that caught our attention the most was a simple model with a certain complexity. These suspended plates. The slicer we used was Prusa slicer because we are doing this test on the Prusa with its color change system, the MMU. But we will also show you how to do it in Arca Slicer, which is basically the same as Bamboo Studio. What did we change to start this test? The original model from the designer was inverted, so we prefer to start with the wider base. What settings are we going to use here? For support, we will enable automatic support. It's a straight piece, just a test, so there is no need to paint the support. It's very important to set soluble support here in the Prusa slicer. We are not actually using it, but I need to tell the slicer because we are going to set this distance to zero. And we will allow me to use different materials with zero contact. If you are using an IDEX printer like Soval, Tycoon, for example, and you are using Prusa slicer, this is very important. Otherwise, you won't be able to mix the materials. Once that's done, we are also set the interface pattern to zero here. So what's going on here? Let me slice and show you first. When we are here in the support interface, these lines have a small gap. This isn't ideal. We wanted to use PETG precisely because it can touch the PLA and leave a better finish. So we remove the gap between these lines. And another important point you might have noticed, but I hadn't, is the Prusa is setting the concentric method as the default here in the interface. This doesn't leave a great finish, so for those of you using Prusa, remember, the default is coming as concentric. We are going to change it to rectilinear here in the interface pattern. In Bamboo Studio and Arca Slicer, we've already tested and the default is rectilinear, so we won't need to worry. But here in Prusa, it's important to adjust it so that it looks like the top and fill layers. Now to print with different materials, I'm going to set Extruder 3 here. It has the material I want for support and also for the interface. Once that's done, now we will have different materials if we selected filament or color print here. And now we will have the extruders 1 and 3 in place with extruder 1 using PLA and extruder 3 using PETG. If you're using Arca Slicer or Bamboo Studio with support settings, enable support. Whether you are using a standard one or with patterns, you can set it however you like. Apart from enabling support, we also need to adjust the distance, just like we did in Prusa. So here, we'll set the interface distance to zero and also increase the number of interface layers. Here, we will put at least five interfaces, okay? This applies to both Prusa and Arca. We want a great finish, so more top layers will finish better. When slicing, as you can see, the filament didn't change, but here in the support tab, I can select which material will be used for the support as well as the interface. Just like in Prusa, but here it's even easier for those of you using a bamboo printer, for example. So we'll select the material for extruder 2 as PETG. Let's slice it and now we have a different material for printing the support versus the part itself. Let me move to the preview module just to visualize what's happening. Notice that we still have a gap between the part and the support, which isn't what we want. So we'll change the Z distance to zero, then slice again. Now if you look, the part is touching the support and look at what's happening. When we use soluble support, it switches to concentric too. I had tested it here without setting it to zero. Look how it changed. You can change the interface pattern to rectilinear and it will make the pattern the way we want. 
It was even good that it happened here in this video so I can show you. As I said, I was using Prusa. If you want to learn all these support settings among other techniques, we have four different tabs here just for support styles. Use the link to our course Print Like a Pro method, which is in the description. And the complete material with all the slicing techniques for supported and unsupported prints, as well as parts with precise finishing. Everything you want to know about 3D printing is in our material. The link will be in the description. Now with the print ready, we confirmed the theory. The material really don't have excellent adhesion. We printed them practically touching and with just a bit of force, we can remove them without leaving accidental marks like if we had broken the piece. We'll see this type of mark when we test PLA with PLA. Just out of curiosity, we tested in the other way around. We printed the piece with PETG and the support in PLA, but the result, as expected, was the same. Easy to remove, left a good finish on the piece, very well attached, and I don't know if you also noticed this when you saw the removal, but even seems like they create a vacuum because they are really touching each other, so it's not like they are glued together. I can put some pressure and they come apart completely. Up until now, it's been very promising. I did a second test without many configurations, which was this horse using PETG support. It even has a somewhat complex geometry, but it doesn't have suspended areas, which is where we have the most use for this technique, but we could already see that removal is easy, though there were some remnants of the PETG material left on the prints. That's also why we chose such striking colors, black for the PLA and orange for the PETG, so that we could see where the marks and remnants of the other material are. After this somewhat preliminary test, now let's do a real comparison. We are going to print a slightly more complex file using all the techniques we've covered. PLA with PLA support, the traditional one, a PLA piece with only the PETG interface, and also a piece with a support entirely in PETG. We chose a very old STLflix file, but it's made for resin printing, so it has some very tricky support areas here. But now we'll print it first with the default PLA settings. It will be good to show you some support tips we use. Starting with painting, for this type of file, I prefer to choose where I wanted the supports to go. With the paint tool, we will ask Prusa to highlight the most critical regions. Let's take a look here. These are all the critical areas. We'll click here to enforce, and it now painted all these critical areas for me. But now it fine-tuned where I see it missed. Why do I prefer doing it? this way. If I set the support, let's say, at 50 degrees, many regions that don't need it would be covered in support. I prefer to be more criterious and then add support where I see it's lacking. Like here on the paw, it's a very suspended area with a lot of overhang, so it needs support. The ear area is okay, but are regions on the face that don't need it, like these ones, so I can remove a small piece here. This area also needs some support at the bottom because I imagine this piece is almost entirely suspended. I will slice it now just to show you what happens. Notice that when I refer to island, I mean regions like this where the parts start separated from the main body. See how we have something isolated here? This is why it's called an island. If there is no support holding this area in place, it will probably cause a major defect in the print. This is one of the reasons this piece is so complex and requires a lot of attention, because it has many islands. So these points need to be very well painted with support holding them. After making these adjustments, let's proceed with the print configuration for PLA with PLA support. The standard one. So here we'll set this to organic. We are printing this piece with a layer height of 0.2, so we'll set it the support distance to one layer. We'll select 
five interface layers for the top of the support and the rest of the settings will leave as default, just adjusting the X and Y separation to 0.8. I like the support to stay away from the part horizontally, so 0.8 distance is fine. This way they don't stick to our piece and we can remove them easily. In the first test, the removal of the support was very easy. There were some thicker parts at the base where the support was, and it was a little harder to break them off. We used pliers to remove them without any accidents. If you are removing any type of support with PLA, I recommend it, you do the same. It's very dangerous and you could cut yourself while removing supports or breaking PLA pieces. Back to it, the surface finish of the print turned out amazing! In the support areas where there was a lot of overhang, there are those well-defined marks that we hate. It's tough to avoid this. Now let's move to the slicer to check the next test using PETG in the support interface. The changes are simple, very similar to what we already seen. We'll select the support distance option, which would be zero for soluble filaments. We'll keep the interface at five, everything in the correct configuration and set this to organic. Now changing to multiple extruders, We'll set extruder 3 for the interface, and here's the first time I sliced this piece. Look, Prusa was set to optimize slicing by merging extruders during the support process. But remember, the main goal of this video is to make use of the lack of adhesion between PLA and PETG. So I didn't think it was a good idea to apply all these changes to all the layers. So what we'll do here in the multi-extruder settings is to set the support extruder to number one. Now we can risk using PETG only in the interface. The removal of the support was much easier now. It didn't stick to the print and it was very brittle to remove. But being brittle is also a problem. As you can see, we even broke the print while removing the support. So we noticed that due to it being a single extruder and needing to purge from one material to another, the PETG mixed with the PLA in the print, which compromised the piece's strength. So here's a big tip for this video. If you are using printers with only one extruder, like all the ones with AMS, CFS system, or even ACE and any cubic, you have to do the original purge of the slicer to ensure that there are no residues of PLA with PETG and vice versa. Because these materials don't bond, and that's why we are doing this video, if we mix them in the print, it becomes super fragile. If you have a printer with multiple extruders, from example a Soval or a Tycoon Idex, you won't have the issues because the PETG will be in one extruder and the PLA in another. So basically, you just print, this material won't mix. As you saw, it didn't work out too well, because the purge between PLA and PETG wasn't working as expected. Let me show you what happens here in Prusa Slicer. In advanced filament settings, there's a suggested purge volume of 81%. This is the value they set. There's a description of where the calculation from this percentage comes from. But it's the default that comes with this slicer. A while ago, we identified that 81% wasn't enough for very light colors. So for light colors, I use 250, like when changing from black to white, to ensure the purge increases that tower height and the extension with which we'll dump this material. Testing the PETG4 PLA, we realized it would have the same effect. So if you look at my configuration for PETG filament, we will see a slightly higher value because of the test I showed, where it was too brittle. So 81% wasn't enough and we had to raise it to 160. And even then, when we printed small pieces, we saw that there was still some left. The tower wasn't enough, so I think we will have to do similar to the light colors. Now I'm telling you this because our next test is to print the cat but with all the support parts in extruder 
3. So now we slice it again and we shouldn't have the problems we had with the previous PLA piece getting mixed up. To confirm this, we'll print all parts here in PETG. But if you want to use just the interface and if the PETG is more expensive, there's that whole issue. People are only using it for the interface to make removal easier, but without wasting more expensive filament as support. It's up to you. Let's see the result. The print turned out great now with expected strength. Now that we increased the required purge between the materials, it was super easy to remove. At the ear was where I saw the most difficult between PLA to PETG, with the support finish much smoother. However, as you saw, in some areas there is still a little bit of PETG, those small orange tips. We'd have a bit more work cleaning the part after removing the support. Now, comparison the two prints with PLA, the one with PETG support and the one without, in my opinion, we do see some improvement in certain areas with PETG. But still, where we have islands or overhangs, the difference isn't that big. I want you to comment on what you think, if it was worth it or if it didn't change as much as expected. Remember that the gain isn't just aesthetic, it's also in the ease of removal. So leave your opinion below. In my opinion, after analyzing these results, I concluded that PETG is a better option for flat areas not for organic prints like this cat, because it makes removal easier for this type of file. But for organic prints like our test here, it gets difficult to break off. It sticks and mixes with the piece, so it didn't seem like a very positive alternative. So for a new round of tests, we chose this little printing place box that's printed without support. But to do this, several bridges are made at the bottom of the box, which leaves a less than ideal appearance. So we modified it in the Fusion 360, making the bottom flat, so we could test the PETG support for a better finish inside the box. Test 1 went terribly wrong. We used PETG only for the interface and also added organic support. And guess what? PETG don't adhere to PLA. When I went to pull the branches from the organic support, obviously they didn't pull the PETG, which stayed stuck to the bottom of the box, so it all went wrong. We'll try again. Now we'll show you the settings that didn't work. As you can see, we made the organic branches in PLA, and then we moved to PETG, so obviously it wouldn't work out. I don't even know why I considered doing it in this way. Afterward, we'll do it like usual, using only PETG, and we'll also change the method. We won't use organic support anymore, we'll use this snug, and to avoid too much risk of getting stuck, we'll increase the distance on the support walls drastically in relation to the piece. We are going to slice again and show you how the result looks. Now, what are we going to do? The support is PETG from the base, so it's solid between them. But look how distant the support is from the piece's wall, making it easier to insert a tool or something to remove it. And the interface at the bottom of the box will do its job, I hope. Now, with the support removed, after doing this test, we saw that for flat areas, PETG is an excellent option. We could never achieve such a finish using the traditional supports, or even bridges, which was the original option for this file. Let's compare one more time with the original file, where we have those bridges to print without support. Now with the modified print using support, look at the finish we got. This is a support area, but it looks like a top layer. It turned out so beautiful. We would never able to do this with any other technique. So in this file, it was super worth it. The conclusion of the video for us is that PETG is a good option to use for PLA support and vice versa too. But it depends on the file's geometry. In flat areas with a good removal opening, it will work very well. In organic parts where there are islands, so maybe resin files that you thought you could now do with PLA and PETG, maybe the gain won't be that great. It won't be that worth it, but I want to know your opinion looking at these results. What did you think? Is it a technique you want to test or was not worth it for you? Leave in the comments. So that's it guys, we are done here. I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.